Dobro proletne. I hope I said it right. Uh, uh, like you saw here, the main part is kind of my coaching philosophy. Uh, it's important to discuss about the technical elements, block, defense, serve, attack, everything. Uh, but I think uh, what I'm going to discuss about today, uh, it can be uh, an inspiration for some of you. We did, uh, I did the same seminar in Hungary. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy that I see uh, many familiar faces. And uh, that is the first time after six years that uh, I'm here and I can exchange some words with you. In general, I don't like to talk about myself, but I will tell you a little bit how it's my story in volleyball. And maybe for some of you it can be uh, inspiring uh, that everything is possible that to achieve in life. So, uh, I started to play volleyball at 14 years old and uh, in general I was never a great player. Uh, but I was... Uh, crazy about the sport. I become crazy about the sport. Uh, uh, from 18 years old, I started to play in Greece in the third, fourth, second league. It was the highest I ever played. And, uh, but I was very, I would say, I got addicted. Like, uh, I would be all the time on the weekend uh, to one gym to watch volleyball games and on TV, uh, watching all the leagues in the world that I could uh, would possible uh, watch. Uh, but because I was not making a lot of money from volleyball, some pocket money I was making back then, I had to work. So, and I think this was very valuable uh, experiences that I got from these works to make me the person that I am now in life, but also as a coach. Uh, <coughs> I wait that uh, Jan okay, translate. Wait for me, like okay. So, uh, I started to do many jobs. In the start, I was like uh, working as a delivery, after as a bartender, after uh, I, I did like, uh, I, I, when I became a little bit older, I'm 24, I went to work in the bank. And like you saw, like I told you already, these jobs had uh, to interfere with a lot of people. And I think this kind of uh, make me good, I think, <laughs> I hope, and uh, how I can uh, read the expressions, the body language, and how to communicate with people. So, like I already told you, I was playing volleyball. So there was one coach that uh, I had, and he uh, took over a first league team in women uh, in Greece, Panionios. And he started to ask me, Yanis, can you please come to help me play with the girls? Uh, spike some balls in defense, you know, like we are doing. Of course, not to pay me, just to go there uh, voluntarily. And of course, like I told you, I was crazy. Of course, I would go, I would do two hours practice of him, and then I would do two hours practice of me uh, for the men's team. But of course, I was working in the morning. In general, I was always in the run. And in general, I'm like this, like a person. If you want me to stop, somebody wants to translate, it's uh, so. Uh, the main time, uh, all the year when I was working, from 27 years old, I was not making a lot of money in the bank. Uh, I was keeping all my savings and I would uh, organize with two friends of, friends of mine and we would go to Italy uh, to watch the practices of big men's team. Uh, and of course the semi-finals and finals of Italian league. And there uh, I saw how it's volleyball, because in Greece we had a really good league back then. Some of you probably played over here, some Czech players. Uh, but in the Italian league there I start to <coughs> get a little bit the virus. I say, oh, how nice would be here to be the, the fifth assistant, or how nice it would be like uh, the scout man, like it was like a part of my one small dream, let's say. Uh, I never wanted to be back then a head coach. I was doing this, I was going there and spent all my savings because I loved the sport and I wanted to see uh, all these big players. Let's say Jan Stork, he, I don't know if he's here now, but I was watching him when I went to Trento and I was watching him, that probably you know him. I never had the ambition to be a coach because I could see how the coaches are suffering, uh, like a player. So, but I 
I really like to watch volleyball like crazy and I, like I told you, it was one of my strengths. I knew all the players in the world here, Lukas Micek, he knows very good. Uh, we made many discussions in Prostejov. So, uh, like, I really like what I saw in Italy. I was thinking like a dream, oh, maybe one time I could be in a team like this. But this was a dream, like I told you. So, uh, at some point, the coach, like I told you, he, I was going to help voluntarily. He took over Olympiakos women's team. It's one of the best teams in Greece. And he comes to uh, my house and he proposed me to be his assistant coach. Uh, I told him, no, no, I don't want to, to be your assistant coach. I want to play volleyball. I think I was 31 years old. And at this moment, I had the best offers of my career. Like, if we can say the career. You... Miloslav, you don't, okay. So, uh, he was coming for one week to my house, uh, trying to convince me. He was telling me, listen, you will work in the bank, you will work in the, uh, as an assistant coach, you will learn to do data volleyball, and like this you will have always a second salary. Like, coming every day, every day, at the end he convinced me. And I don't know what he saw in me, maybe when I was in his team, I was... Uh, the captain, I was trying always to keep the team together. I was in general not a selfish player and maybe he saw something on me that I could be a good coach. Uh, this is what I assume, I never asked him, but yeah. So I started to, to work as an assistant coach and slowly there the virus of becoming coach got into me. Uh, the first year we did a great result, we won the cup, it was unexpected. And the second year, uh, we won the championship and the cup. Uh, meanwhile, during the second year, there I decided the biggest change of my life. That uh, I had to quit the job of, uh, in the bank that I could do until 67 years old, forever. And uh, that I would follow the small dream that I told you before. That, oh, I will try to go abroad and try to work in volleyball. So 98% of, of my friends, family, everybody was telling me, are you crazy? What are you doing? And uh, I said, okay, I'm 32 years old. If I don't try it now, uh, I will go 45 and I will try 45. It's not possible. So I said, this is my last chance. And if I don't succeed, I will come back and I will work in McDonald's. I'm not afraid about this. So. This was a, a small story of how I became, uh, uh, how I started to work more uh, kind of in professional volleyball. So, so when I went out, I went with my wife, we came to Prostejov. Uh, like Lucas was there, I was going to all the practices, watching most of the practices. Many times when they hit, need somebody to help in the practice, I was there, of course, voluntarily scout some games. I was going to Lucas, he was in second team, help him sometimes also. And always the discussion, the main topic was volleyball, volleyball, volleyball. And of course, always watching everything, uh, all the games. Uh, meanwhile, I, I work with, for a, an American company. I found the job that uh, American colleges, Chinese teams, Japanese teams were coming to Europe and uh, I was kind of their guide and uh, from there I could see how many teams were developing, how they were behaving and also I got many influences uh, from how I'm coaching now from all these different uh, cultures, cultures that uh, all these teams had. Uh, <coughs> my wife is living in Maribor and over there is a Probably you all know this DRAS, uh, this DRAS center, that uh, there is a big facility for volleyball and national teams. And uh, I was also, when I, when I was in Maribor, all day watching there, all the practices for many, many national teams, young teams, from everything. Because, and I'm still doing it now, when I go and I see somewhere one practice, I will sit down and watch, because uh, there are many, many great coaches. I'm really lucky where I am now. I'm grateful uh, that I have this job that I have now and where I'm coaching in club. Uh, but I, 
every day in my life and uh, I try to improve and learn because I don't know, I behave like that, I don't know nothing. So, like I told you, I don't uh, like uh, to speak about myself, I talk a lot right now, 10 minutes, but I think from some of you uh, it can be an inspiring story that if you want something so much and you have a dream and you live for it, maybe you have the chance to go after your luck and uh, you will be like how I am right now, like I told you, I'm very fortunate uh, a coach in a big club that plays and participates in Champions League and also in the Czech national team. So, this was the first part of the presentation. So, from this, from all of this what I told you, I really believe it built my character as a person and also uh, as a coach. Uh, after I became assistant coach in Stuttgart, for three years uh, with a great head coach that I learned a lot and then it came the moment that they offered me to become head coach and like uh, probably all of you you have like all you're gonna have in the future they come to me and they offer me Yanis we want you to be the head coach I said oh life was good so far As uh, assistant coach the nice guy so I was really hesitating and uh, I didn't want, uh, honestly, I didn't want to take it. I had a good life, hitting the balls, being nice with the girls. <laughs> I knew the problems that the head coach job had. Like I told you, this was not my dream. My dream was to be in a team, like an assistant, the nice guy. So they come to me the first time, they come to me the second time, but then they tell me, Yanis, you have to take it or leave it because we have to continue our planification. So then I had a, a really important discussion that this also remains to me every day before I go to the work. I, I discuss with him and I say, Idiakos, uh, I got this opportunity, they offer me the job and uh, now it's on me if I take it. And he told me, what's your problem? I said, I feel I'm not ready. And he gave me the best advice somebody could give. When you think that you, uh, that you are ready, when you think that you are ready, this is the day that you have to stop. So, like of you, many of you that you are already head coaches, you know uh, very good that we are doubting a lot of times when we go to practice, oh, should I do this drill, should I do the other drill, how I have to behave. So this is what I use every day before I go to practice. I go like it's my first practice, with the same passion, with the same energy, with the same motivation. There was one period in my life, and I think I have to share this with you, uh, when it was my second year as a head coach, and we won with Stuttgart the German Championship, and with Czech Republic, with the national team, we won the Golden League and uh, we become second on the Challenger Cup, I think. This was kind of very good results for first year. So this moment, I kind of felt, you know, I'm too good. Like all the people there, I felt that I'm too good. Uh, this is the biggest mistake somebody can do in general in life and in this job if it's not humble. So this was the worst week of my I would say coaching, if I have a career, my coaching, I was going to practice, you know, and you know, the players, they can feel, they can feel you, the coach, when he's stressed, when he wants to push, when he's very cocky, I would say, they were very confident. This was the worst, let's say, five days of my career. So I went to the mirror, I slapped my face five times, pop, 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 and then I come back to the normal Yanis, the nice guy, humble, hardworking, and I say to myself, no, you are not good, you are not nothing. Because the most important is, uh, in this job, everybody has to understand that uh, what happened yesterday, let's say yesterday we won uh, Slovenia 3-1. If we lose today, nobody cares what happened yesterday. Nobody cares, let's say, with my team, we was uh, with Vasas the championship this year and the cup. Next year, if we don't succeed, like it's over. Okay, this is the past. Many people of us, including me, 
we are thinking, oh, I won the title before five years, or we won the title before eight years. No, 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 no. Nobody cares about nothing. Nobody reads the yesterday newspaper. So this I remind every day to myself, like nobody remembers what was the success. They remember the failure. Everybody remembers the, when it was a bad result, but then nobody remembers what happened before. So I go every day to the practice with the same hunger, like I never succeed, I succeed nothing, and I'm trying to push, like uh, it's my first ever practice I will do as a head coach. So this coach that I talk again, he also advised me, try to be yourself. Yanis, try to be yourself. Don't try to copy anyone. So also this I found it during the days, during the months, during the years. I'm trying to be myself. And for sure I can take all this what I watch or what I'm going to watch on YouTube when I'm trying to find a drill or I watch many practices, I watch many teams, many cultures, I try to take what I wanted for me to work in a team better and I'm still doing it every day. When uh, I had an idea, when I, when I see something, I'm trying to improve and learn every day. This is my behavior. So, I told you a little bit how it started and now I will tell you about things that uh, we as coaches, uh, we see many things but we close our eyes. Uh, I was closing my eyes also in the start of my coaching career and I was wondering why this is happening. So you can be the best prepared coach in practice, you can be the best uh, in tactics, you can be best in everything, but you have to be good also how to create a team. Uh, and it's easy to say, hey guys, let's be a team, but it's not easy also how uh, to function this on the court. And the most important is how we can be a team in the difficult moments, in the easy moments and the happy moments and when we are winning, everybody is there for the photo. The presidents first, the team managers. But when you are losing, everybody try to, to go a little bit away from the photo and also with the team. I will give you one classical example now. Let's say, we are winning a point after 20, the score is 22-22, wow, everybody crazy together. You are losing a point at uh, 23rd after 20, and let's, go, let's say it was not a good set, or it was not a good pass, or it was a wrong attack, and you see like six foreigners on the court. Maybe one will try to do it, two persons to stay together. But the most common thing that you see uh, is that everybody will go away from the handle that they go there in the middle of the court. Always before we start the season, now that I'm doing after some year of experience, we have a meeting with the team that I, I am part of, like with also the Czech national team, Vasa, Stuttgart before. And we sit down with the players and I want to tell them, I, I ask them, how you want that they describe us as a team? How you want these people, this audience, to see us when they see Czech national team or Vasas Budapest now that I'm coaching, how they want to see us and say, what did this team describe? Six stars, one uh, great player, you want to see 14 fighters together, that they are all together losing or winning together, what do you want? I continue, okay. <laughs> So, of course, everybody there, slowly, everybody is shy in the start, and we put on the board, and we write how we want to describe us. Oh, they say, we need to work hard. Okay. We need to behave as a team. Yes. We need to be good to each other, and try to talk with good body language. Yes. So, we define everything. And now, I said, everybody in this room, we agree on this. Everybody, we agree on this, the team, that we are, everybody, yes, okay. So now we agree, everybody, the team, the staff and the team members, that we are a team. But you go to the next practice, everything very good, perfect. They go to the second practice, again, still good. But on the third practice, oh, you start to feel, oh, I will make face to Ondra over here, I had a bad set. Oh, you will make the other one, you didn't communicate for the ball you spike the ball out, then the problem starts.
There is my job to give everybody a reminder. I will stop the practice and I will mention what is going on. The same thing about block defense and the same thing if I make this to the setter. Or this is happening how often to every team and how many times all of you play volleyball we did it by ourselves. It's one of the most important things in the team sport. But like I told you, in my first years, I was never paying attention to these things. I was saying, ah, we lost because we were not good in attack. Ah, yes. We lost because we were not good in service. Yes. We lost because we didn't do block. For me, this is bullshit. I'm, I'm trying to break the ice a little bit here. But the most important in team sports is that you behave like a team. When the bad set is there, when the bad pass is there, you will stay together. When you are making mistakes, one day Ondra will not be good playing good. Miloslav will play better. We have to go always when we lose in the, the point in the handle. And I want to see everybody how they behave when we are losing. Of course, when we are winning, everybody is happy, we are together. But what is going on when Ondra cannot, attack, cannot score one ball? He can help in other things. But when we come together over there on the handle, the most important, for sure, you will go, oh, I'm not killing the ball, you're losing your mind. It's really important how you can recover from this, how fast you can recover. It's normal that you go to your bubble, but it's not normal to go against your teammate and try to find excuses. Uh, it's the fault of the set, it's the fault of the pass, it's the fault of anything else. I will stop the practice many times, at uh, the same time I will stop for one long skill that they will do, one long drill about how they behave when they are not at the team. Why? They gave me already also the green light. Oh, coach, we want to be like this. Yes, what we agree on the first day of the season. If you want to be like this, you have to give effort. It's not only attack, serve, pass, defense. And on this, if you behave like a team, you can recover from it. One day you will not be good on this, in one element. But you have to be fighting, you have to be good to your teammate, to give confidence to the other teammate. So, really important is communication. And like I told you, I will stop. I will make them discuss. Who is, I will give them the speech. I saw this from American teams. They do it a lot. And they say, what's the problem right now? Oh, they are in shock the first times. What do you know? The coach asked my opinion. What should I say? So, I try to provoke them to tell me what they think. Some of them they will do, some of them they will not, but they are also, you can see who has a kind of leadership skills. Or I try to provoke them that they create this. Yeah. So, like I told you, communication is the same, uh, the very big element. And I really try to have at least one time a week with most of the players and also the, the members of the staff to discuss with them what is their worries how they are doing this week, uh, how it's going with their performance. Uh, I really pay attention on these things and uh, I, I trust the players. Like I try to get the feedback from them and for sure sometimes I can adjust the practices. Not, uh, <laughs> I know who, who to start, you know, you have the most hardworking persons, the most lazy. But from this, I really try to understand what is going on. If there is any problem, you can get a lot of things from this. But this needs a lot of effort by me and the coaches. Uh, I have been in uh, hundreds of practices. And in general, I have seen practices three hours, three and a half hours. I have seen practice one hour. Uh, and in general, I'm a fan of uh, like uh, the idea that practice for sure uh, uh, with energy and practice like, uh, like it's like a game. When you come to our practice, you will never see one ball to fall down. Ah, it's okay. Next one. And this can be a habit because if you do that in the practice, you will go to the game. In general, I like to practice with energy. Energy means like like I want that when somebody comes and some of you, you were there already uh, that you don't feel, oh, why are you here? One ball bounce. It's like you go to the church. If you come to our practices in the Czech national team, 
or uh, in Vasas right now, you will feel, oh, here is something is going on. I don't know if they play good volleyball or what sport they play, but here they do something. And like this, with the energy that I saw it and I really like it and I use it, it's not like, ah, oh, we come there and we talk and we have fun. Imagine you have how many times it happened, 10 o'clock in the morning, you come to do one practice, ball control and service seed. And they are coming and they're like, ah, oh, I'm tired. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm there to remind them also and tell them, hey, guys, do you know how fortunate you are? You are doing what you love. You play the sport that you love. And there are people that wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work in the bakery, work in the cleaning the houses. Do you understand that you make some very decent money to do what you love? The... And automatically they reset, they understand. It's not like Kobe Bryant said, and probably you read it somewhere, it's not the hours that you practice. It's the, the hours that you were present in practice and how much your eyes are open and you want to improve and you want to work hard. Again, coach has to be there, remind, all the time. That's why we say coaching job is not easy. I know many times also I go and I'm tired, but if I go and I'm calm, immediately the players, they feel it. I know the practice, they will not be good. They will feel, oh, today he is calm, we go easy. But I try, like I told you in the first part, when we go there, I'm the loudest. I push them like crazy. Push them, of course, like uh, really nice. I never try to use bad words against them. But they hear me and then right now, let's say in Czech national team, I came this year, I didn't even have to say, guys, we have to talk. They start to talk by themselves and it's a habit of them. And during the season also they miss it. This is what they tell me. Failure is part of the game. Uh, mistakes are part of the game. And in our team, we never say, ah, it's Milo's fault or Andre's fault. We try to solve it together. Uh, this is what we are doing uh, all the time. And we never try to point figure, oh, Andre spy spike out 10 balls after 10, 20. That's why we lost. No, this is not us. That basically many coaches in this planet are doing. Ah, we lost because Milos was, uh, didn't put the ball inside. Statistics are really important for us and for me. And we use statistics and I work harder than everybody to analyze everything. But it's not so important than everybody thinks. More, me, more important is the body language when I go to practice and when I'm in the game. If I have the knife in my teeth and I'm ready to fight. And this is something you cannot read very easy. About statistics, let's say Miloslav was the best scorer of the team. He had 50% in attack, but he didn't go for five balls in the defense. For me, this is not good, but this can you read it in statistics? In the match report? No, nobody can read it. Or like uh, he didn't go for two balls or he didn't communicate with a teammate. That's why I tell you body language is really important and how you will approach the game and how you go to the court. So how we watch video and we analyze every opponent, we will uh, watch video also about how we behave. When we win point, when we lose point, when I attack out, when I lose the serve, when I lose the set. And over there is really important to see how your team is functioning. Like I told you in the start. When you are winning, everybody's together. We are friends, all good. We are happy, the photo together. When we are losing, the most common thing is you will find probably three, four foreigners, like, uh, let's go together. And you will ask me, do uh, your girls now in Vasa or in Czech na national team, they do always this? I will answer you very honestly, no. But I'm there to remind them every time. And I have to be the one who reminds them, guys, what we agree. How we want us, all these people that they are here, they want us to describe us as a team. How is our culture? So, for a, for a team... Oh. Yes? No. So, for a team to grow, 
and become a team, you need a lot of difficult moments. Because I had teams, let's say this year, uh, in Vasas Buddha, we didn't lose the game from 2022 December. And in general, we are winning and everybody's happy. But you will see when your team is behaving as a team and they stick together and they are not selfish and try to be together when you have difficult moments. Uh, I need to be there constant to remind them. This year I will give you one example. Like uh, we play with a second league team uh, from Hungary and the first two sets it was 25-23. So the level it was like this, but the attitude how we went inside the court uh, on, the, on, the, on the game court, it was so bad you cannot imagine. It was the worst performance one of my teams had. So. Because we already had some issues, and I constantly remind them, what did I do? I don't advise you to do it. Next day, 7 o'clock morning in the practice. Uh, and from this moment, for, for one week, it was, they never had free. Never. I bring them together. We did game situations 7 o'clock in the morning, and I promise you it was the best practice we ever had, jabbing. This is, goes to there, they, they say, oh, we cannot jump in the morning. When they are afraid, they were jumping 10 centimeters more. So, we did, I was bringing them in the afternoon. I was letting them inside the video room and they have to keep notes for two hours. All the game, what we did wrong, what we did good, what we did bad. And after, we were sitting there and discussing. I was drinking coffee outside. And like I remind them what I told you, other people are going to normal work. They are working their ass all day for nine hours, taking three times less money than you. And you are come here like a princess to go to play with a second lead team and you don't go for the ball. So for one week, it was the worst week of them. Also for me, it was not pleasant. But there, I really believe we really uh, built this what we were missing at this point. So after I told them, I asked them, how you want me to be? The Yanis you know or the Yanis? Because I know the other styles. I told you I have watched uh, many coaches. No, no, we want to be the normal. Okay, we will be the normal. So when was uh, after one, two months, the practice was not good or I could see, oh, I'm tired. Do you want to change how we will practice? So everybody, oh. No, 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 no. The, suddenly the practice is good. Of course, this is not the way that I want. But everybody needs reminders to remember what happened. So constantly, when you have to do with people, all of us, me, Miloslav, Audrey, all of you, we, when we have something, we think it's ours. No, it's not ours. When we will lose it, then you will appreciate what you have. So, like I told you, I'm trying to be humble. I'm trying to go with the same hunger every day on the practice. Like I, I never succeed nothing in my life. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to be a better person, a better coach. So, I will tell you two more things and I will finish. I will uh, let you in your peace. So, uh, this about the how loud we are in the practice. I will give you two examples that is funny and they liked it. This year we play uh, with Vasas and Champions League game. And it's this hotel that is a volleyball hotel in Istanbul. And we start to go inside. We do serve-receive. And, you know, on the, same, uh, on the second floor, there was having Turkish Airlines, one of the best teams in Turkey, a video. And it's one of the best coaches, Roberto, uh, was watching the video. And they stopped the video. And they came outside to see what is going on. So we finished the practice. And it's come, I had a Turkish setter in my team. It's coming all the Turkish girls to her. What happened to the practice? Like, no, no, it's normal like this. What is normal? You were shouting like, and the coaches was uh, asking, what is this? No, we do it because we like it and we have energy. So, and the Roberto said, probably we have to do the same because how we are practicing in the morning, it's not like this. So, and the other story is we remember with the COVID time, we were in Prostejov. And Poland came to play some friendly games. Uh, and you know that we have Polish assistants in the staff and uh, fitness coaches. We go inside to play in this, this small gym of Prostejov. And the girls 
when we start to warm up, they start to shout, ah, ah, and it becomes very loud over there. So we won on the first game, I think, 5-0 Poland, that Poland is one of the top teams in the world. And the next day, I think we won 3-2. And the Polish guys go to the girls that they were together in the same teams. They say, what happened? I don't know. We were afraid in the start. They were shouting so much. It was uh, kind of funny that uh, the girls went so aggressive inside and start to push and shout that uh, they were lost in the Polish girls. The last thing that I want to say, uh, this year, uh, the previous year, know about the European Championship. We made a meeting before we go. And we discussed again how we have to be there, how we have to be as a team, how, what we have to do. And I don't know how it came to me. I asked, guys, if we lose the first game with Azerbaijan 3-0, pop up, what will happen? They are looking at me. I said, yes, I know, but it can happen. What we do? Everybody said with one voice, we have to stay together, we have to focus, we have to fight hard the next day in the practice and the next game. So when we lost the game really bad Azerbaijan against Azerbaijan, it was everybody together, they did what they said, it was really bad moments for everybody, everybody was talking what was performance was this. Uh, and we achieved one of the best results. I think like uh, nobody expected after this first game where we lost from Madrid by Zantri 0 that we would manage to uh, be in the best eight teams of European Championship. So and the last thing that I want to, to say, and after if you have any questions, this I read it somewhere and I really uh, believe on this. Bad teams lead by nobody. Average, I will add also here, good teams lead by the coach. But the championship teams, the teams that they achieve something, lead by the players. So this is one of my tasks and my goals, like I told you, to provoke them, ask them questions, give them roles, that they will try to solve all the important things that they have in the locker room, during the court. They don't need the coach. Of course, always you have to be there to give reminders, but they are adults, and if everybody has a common goal, and we believe in something like a team, this is how you're going to succeed. So this was my presentation. I hope it was interesting for some of you or it was uh, something you would like to hear. If somebody has any questions, thank you very much for your time. And yeah, that's it. Yes. Yes. So my job in the club team and my job in the national team is much different, totally different. So when I, when I watch video how we're going to sign a player, it's really body, important, the body language, how they behave, what I told you before, all this. When they're losing point, how good uh, he uh, is with a teammate, I try to contact uh, the people that I know to find out about this player and for sure about the skills. But the character is really, really important. Uh, in, a, in a team, for sure, you have, you have different cultures. One time I had in Stuttgart 10 different nationalities, the worst year of my life. Like it was very difficult to bring them together. But uh, important is that everybody is good human beings. It, it doesn't matter if it's the most difficult character or the most you know, quiet. All this, you can combine it together. When I will be a good coach, when I will feel a good coach, that when I combine all these different characters, that they believe something, and they are, I try to hold them together, and we can achieve something. So we spend a lot of uh, time on this, of how they behave inside the court. And the second question, because I was talking about, uh, continue this, about Czech national team that I told you is a totally different job. Uh, they are, you cannot pick the players. You cannot sign transfers. They are, I have to try to be good to bring everybody together as they are the character. But like I told you, if we put down and we all agree and everybody is positive, even the most difficult character of the world will follow. If somebody is negative, I will remind him. I will tell him, hey, we said we don't do that. One, two, three. 
everybody gets second, third chance because it's normal. It's the character of the person. But at the end, you know very good, like uh, Greek people, we are not easy. Czech people also, you have your uh, special things in your culture. Like if everybody we are together, we can achieve really good things. So the girls, they are doing a really good job. They try to adapt on my philosophy. And I think we are doing decent results at least. Maybe we lose games, but we behave as a team. This is the most important for me. And the easiest for me would be Milos Lavgo. I will bring Ondra. No, it's a challenge for me if I try to make Milos Lav believe on what I believe and the team should have the principles and he will be there helping, help us. You are talking about who's the input, right? You're going to do it during the practice. Yes. And it's to do that during the match where you have like limited time or limited resources. Yeah. Uh, I saw it from American colleges, they do a lot. I saw Chinese teams doing a lot. <coughs> In America, my opposite confessed, uh, confessed this year to me, she was not telling me before, we have a three second rule. What is this, Taylor? No, every three seconds we have to say something. If you don't say something, you have a punishment. So, and you know there, they take a lot of money to be on the college, so they have to say. Uh, me, I didn't have this three second rule, <laughs> she just told me, but First one, if they don't talk, I'm always like, like I told you, but in general, like a player, I was like this. I was trying always to keep everybody together. Let's go, push, push, push. I'm doing the same thing now. Like I told you, the last two years in Czech national team, sometimes I don't even try. And in Vasa, the same thing. Because it's already on their blood. And for sure, not all of them, but many of them, they really like it and they miss it. This is what they confess to me. Confess to me. It's not easy. <laughs> Trust me, I don't have e easy times. Every night I will wake up at 3 o'clock and think about something. It's not easy. I knew it before I take this challenge. But this is our life. Prosim. Like... Uh, like I told, like I don't know if you explain it, we sit down, we meet, we write down how we want to be. Lucas will tell me, I want that we are nice to each other. My body language has to be positive against me, I'm not like, uh -huh. or when we are losing the points, I will not do to the setter. Or when we come, everybody on time, 15 minutes before, we create some rules, but at the end, they create it. Because I bring one of them one by one, they take a mark, they write it. We, we create, a, how you call this now, a paper. We put it on the locker room and there is always there the rules that they made it, not me. If you forget something, if you are late, there is some, you have to sing, let's say. The other day I was, uh, I didn't know, I forgot something. I had to follow the punishment, I sing. But like this, when they, it's their chance, they will not uh, do something. They will have to sing, let's say. Or if you do it after one, two, or three times, there is a bigger punishment. So discipline is really important. And most important is the captain is doing this after, not me. And something really important that I didn't say. I will not behave Miloslav, the big star, different. And Andre, that he's not so good player, let's say he's the second. <laughs> that different. No. When Miloslav will do something, he will have the same thing that I know sometimes it's not easy, but that's why I'm there. And I have to do it. Because if you don't do it, you automatically lost the respect from everybody. That's why I say in the start, be yourself. This is me. I try to be in the team, everybody equal. I try. Sometimes it's not happening, but about the punishment and stuff like this, or about the effort, how we go to the ball, everybody will do the same. You, you will tell me, oh, coach, this way is successful. For, there is many ways to go to, to success. But this is my philosophy and I, how I would like when I was younger and I was playing volleyball, how I would like, uh, I'm thinking how I want my coaches to be or which coach was uh, an example for me. I have one question. Yes. Uh, you are a coach of the girls, as many of us, maybe 50-50. Yeah. 
Uh, every, everybody know that uh, girls are a little bit different than the boys. <laughs> and if you have some mechanics, uh, how to handle the girls between themselves? No, they they can be. I have. <laughs> if you hear, if you hear, ah, uh, yes, yes. yes, yes. So my answer is, if somebody tells you that he knows women, he doesn't know nothing. And this is not a joke, like, uh, uh, but it's very challenging how you can make them to be together. But like I told you, when I see faces, there is no face. No, stop. Why you make faces to her? I will stop the practice. I know they hate me, but the next time they will not do it. Or when they will do it again, or all the team punishment. So after, oh, we agree on these things, what we said. And everybody forget, but the women, they really like discipline, women. I never coach men, but I was in a men's team, so I think when I was playing. If with women you are fair and you have discipline, in my experience, I'm a coach, head coach from 2018, everybody follows, but you have to be the lines for everybody the same. I cannot be different to Milos Love than Andre. So, all, it's not about women or men. If everybody understands that there is something what we are doing, we are working good and we are fair, and I will not close in my eyes what I do to Miloslav against Andre, she will follow and they will follow. And of course, the reminders, I will stop. Oh, why you make face now? Talk to the setter, how you want the set. What we are doing, we attack the ball and we go to the other side. Everybody think about themselves, men or women. But that's why we are there, to constantly remind them. And then after, it comes natural. You lose it after, of course. After two weeks, it will be bad again. But I'm there. Do you still have women who would do the not on a practice in front of you, but somewhere behind you? For sure, they are doing everything behind me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Then if I care what they do behind my back or in the locker room, then, then I cannot be a coach. For sure, they are talking very bad things. The most important for me is when I see them after some years, like they do now, and I get messages that they say, OK, this guy, what he was doing, he was a nice person. Maybe he was a bad coach, but at least we had a good team. We had fun. We achieved these things. Something. We lose, but we lose together. I was fighting for a for a dream, for a goal. This is my, my belief and how I want to think my mind as a coach and how the principles has to be in a team. For sure, even the players that they like me the most, they turn my back, oh, the stupid guy. But I'm okay with this. Many of us, we are parents. I want to say something last one. Uh, and the generations are really changing. Like, when I was young, I was 18, I was going to play the men's team. If the set is, was not, I was a setter. God's sake. So, I was setting the ball. If the attacker didn't like the ball, the 30 years old, bah, he would spike the ball to me. Now, this is not happening. The, how we grow up our child is really different, and uh, we kind of spoil them, I would say. I had players, 17 years old, 16, that they come to me and they, ah, or one time I went to the locker room, this, or I went one time before the game to talk to the locker room, 17 years old, she was waiting like this. You don't, know, you don't want to know what happened. Not this moment, because it was a game. If we have a meeting, and let's say I was working in the bank, and I have a, a meeting with my manager, imagine this, and I go and I'm like this, or how the girl, do you think it's normal? Do you think it's normal to come to the coach with a gum and, and I'm not a guy who I want to be the general, oh, you have to be, I'm very like calm. Only about effort I get crazy if they don't try. But how we grow up, our kids, guys, they don't have a discipline. They don't understand, oh, he's the coach, I have to be normal. So I had a girl this year, I will not tell you who, in. Vasas, they were telling me, oh, she's like this. Her old coach and the president. Yes, yeah, she's like this. What is this like this? 
she's coming like this, uh, uh, I'm tired, so the biggest talent, let's say, in Hungary. No, she's not like this. So, right now, this girl is coming like, when I talk to her, like this. And her mother came to tell me, thank you very much how, you, how my daughter is behaving, she's a totally different person. Maybe you laugh, but this is a reality. If she goes, everybody stop volleyball from these girls that they make money only from play volleyball and they go outside, they will have many slaps in their faces. You cannot go make faces to the coach or to anybody. If you stop them, they will understand. If you don't stop them, if I don't stop them, when they will go tomorrow to work in a normal job, then they will understand. Oh, I have to pay the rent, I have to pay the house, insurance, and I have to be respectful. Because many of us, I said it, I was also doing it in my first year, we are closing our eyes. And we don't see that she made the face. Or the substitution, you took her out. Uh, what is this? Yanis, I have one, maybe it's not a question, question. But yesterday was a, it was a big day for you to win uh, over Slovenia, but especially for this country because they won the World uh, Cup uh, in hockey. It was in Prague. It was huge day for us, huge uh, success. And uh, right after this success, there was two uh, two discussions uh, uh, on TV with the captain and with the head coach, and they asked them what was the key uh, element of this uh, his success. success. And they both separately said it was how they behave in the tough situation. And today's presentation of you was all about behavior of individuals and behavior of the team. So I'm glad like. You all three are on the same page, and you are highlighting how important it is to how you are behaving and how is the character. After 20, Just opa, prosim, yeah. It happened to me in the past. My team lost uh, games because they start to argue on the fifth set for no reason. I don't know what somebody said to the other, and then you see suddenly six strangers, but 15-7. You will lose the game before we even you understand. When you have six individuals. If you have a Gonu inside, maybe she has her day. But in Czech Republic, we don't have a Gonu. So, yes. yet, yes. Uh, what I'm telling you, this is it's coming from my experience and how I spend a lot of time and energy watching videos about the behaviors. And also, I'm watching video about myself. Because many times, it happened to me, I go, ah. Uh, like I hate it. What is the message I give to the player when I behave like this? I'm trying really to control my emotions on my body language. I think it's also very important. Someone else? Again, I hope you find it interesting. It was a little bit different than to talk again about block, defense, serve, pass. That is many ways to do that and many uh, ways to do it successful. Uh, I was in many seminars like you like this, but nobody ever talked to me about these things. And I think it can be valuable if somebody is open to work in these things. It doesn't mean you will have success for sure, but it's really important for a team structure and team principles and how you can have some discipline. <coughs>